back guys this is rosa from rosa's resources this is the second part um, of the video uh the first one i was in white plains new york now i'm in long island um i got lots of time so i could sit here in the car and actually do the video for you guys this is talking about breaking those generational curses and growing up in a narcissistic uh home sometime uh actually growing up i didn't know again i was in a narcissistic family system but now that uh my husband woke me up my he's not my ex-husband yet he's my husband he walks he woke me up i could recognize like i said when you're around narcissists your alarm clock which is your body your senses go off if your discernment is up everything is going to go off in your body when they these people come around you it's just so strong now thank you jesus that i know how to recognize them anywho so in my first video you guys could go back and watch part one to this video this is now part two i just want to share some of my testimony uh growing up in a narcissistic household just some of the things that i'm reflecting on um now that i am awoke okay so i, I spoke a little bit about my brother which is the golden child i'm the scapegoat i never fit in never ever ever not with friends oh my goodness growing up was like um, I block my, I block a lot of my childhood out. I try to not remember it because it was, it was not pleasant for me. I started living life, the life that I wanted to live. I started living it around maybe twenty, uh, twenty-two, something like that, because uh, yeah, it was just horrible. Let me, so let me go into telling you guys a little bit now about. Okay, so I told you about the first narcissist that I met, which was my, my mother, and my father. Now that I'm awoke and just reflecting. This is all reflection, guys. I want to share my story with you guys and hope that um, you reflect also on your childhood and see the patterns and see the people in your family uh, that contribute to your pain. Okay? Because somebody have to be a gener generational curse breaker, which is what I am. I refuse to be in that family system and participate anymore now that I know the truth. I do not want my grandkids, grandkids, grandkids. I do not want my generation to go, the, the rest of my generation to go through this at all. You know, I want to break the chain. I want to break the pattern. It's all about the patterns, you know? Okay, and then you're going to recognize uh, maybe some of your the younger kids that also have narcissism as well. So anyway, let's go there. Um, um, so I told you guys in part one about my mother, my father, my and my uh my 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 brother the golden child the golden child gets away with everything he gets away with everything like uh he got more privilege than me you know he he used to go out the windows bring girls and i used to do a lot of things that i dare not do i was like cinderella you know i used to have to go to school come home cook i was really the narcissist slave for real um um, I guess they thought they they grew up, grew you know, gave us a good life, which I'm not complaining because I'm here. Um, at the end of the day, this is all about learning, and I'm speaking my truth. Uh, they did the best that they can with the equipment they have. Just like as parents, we we do the best with what we know and what we have. But what I can tell you guys, just from this whole experience, is that we should always keep learning and just keep an open mind throughout your life never think that you know enough always strive to learn more okay so the golden child is like uh just do whatever they want to do they always get away with murder but when you do it as the scapegoat the black sheep in the family excuse me you're gonna get punished you're gonna get beatings you're gonna get disciplined and the beatings that i got was like really not <laughs> really really wicked what now they will call child abuse what now they will call child abuse but at the end of the day I guess it was for my good you know I don't know what to say um, I turned out to be a pretty fair person I never went to jail never had any problems you know um, to my knowledge you know I guess my kids would have a different story to my knowledge I, I didn't abuse my kids you know to my knowledge I have a good relationship with my kids you know, you never know. I'm open. If they said anything, I will listen to my kids. I, I think I have a fairly good relationship with my kids. 
Um, I could go and talk to them. They could come and talk to me, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to listen. Okay. But anyway, like growing up, I remember, so this is one of my testimony. I remember when I got my period, um, I was so scared because the third narcissist that I met, the one that uh, my first abuse was with my uh, sister's. I don't know if it was her husband or her boyfriend. It was too, I was, I blocked all, a lot of my childhood out. I don't know if you guys experienced this, let me know. But uh, most of my childhood, I blocked it out because it wasn't pleasant for me. Um, so he abused me while she laid there in the bed next, next, next to us. She, she abused me. But the first experience, to be fair, was that my parents was going to a party. He had a one bedroom apartment. They sent me there. My sister was not there. Um, it was just a one bed and he molested me right there on the bed while my brother laid on the other side. Okay, it was devastating. Um, so I'm wondering, right, as, as a grown person, when the parents pick you up, I can't remember, like I said, I blocked my childhood out. Didn't they see any changes in me? Wouldn't that cut my soul? Like, I don't remember the details. Everything is so scanty. Anyway, from that day on, he, I want to say he molested me all the time, but the, the, how this how this narcissistic person um, got away with it is that he had money, and he smiled. You know they're very clever, so he used to take us to Coney Island, take us. He used to give us everything, monetary stuff. You know he used to have luxury car. I don't know what he did for a living, but he used to just throw money around. He had money. I don't know if he was a drug dealer or what, but he had money. I don't remember my childhood, guys. I blocked it out. So the, the guy that I really wanted to give my virginity to, at the end, I, I did end up giving it to him. But what happened was, when they found out that I was talking to this guy, I got the beating out of my life, okay? I got the beating out of my life because my, my uh, auntie went to tell my mother that she, at that time I wasn't even having sex. I was having sex with my sister's boyfriend because he was molesting me. And they went and said that I, they saw me with the guy and I wasn't even having sex with the guy. And I got the beating of my life. I, they did not want to hear my story, my side of the story. Anyway, um, that was the third narcissist that I met. Then I met my child's, my child's, my daughter, her father. I don't know what kind of narcissist he was, but he was crazy as hell. That man tried to commit suicide with me twice. Um, he used to beat me up in the street. I'm talking about torturous, like kick down, kick me up on the street, beat me up. My brother never intervened. That's my only brother. He never intervened. When I came in the house, black eye, everything, my parents never said anything. So I thought it was normal. This was normal behavior for me. Um, yeah, it was just horrible. That guy, my child's father, my first child's father, um... I want to talk about him for a second. He used to beat me. We used to fight in the street. Because at one point, I just we just was fighting. You know, I wanted to leave him, but he just kept on fighting. He used to be very, very... I, I, I can tell you that. That is one man that abused me. The, the physical abuse was bad. Very, very bad. Everything else uh, besides him was emotional after him. So it's always abuse in my life. It's sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and that narcissist abuse. Everything was in, in, involved with him. But let, let's stick on my child's father for a second. And I'm telling this story, guys, just for teaching and just to clear my brains. Okay? Um, we used to go to, like, um, clubs. He used to have me in the room. People looking for me can't find me. He was torturing me in that room. And we are in a club. Um, I had a friend, and she used to always help me out. That was my best friend. We're still friends now. She used to get in the fights. She's the only one that ever helped me, um, besides one of my cousins. One day, my, my cousin, because my brother not, never got involved. One day, my cousin went to uh, um, approach my child's father about, like, beating me up or whatever, because I did have males in my family. My father, please, nobody said anything to this man. It was like, I thought it was normal. I'm Jamaican, so I always see people getting beat up, and I'm thinking, okay, this is normal. Go suck your mother. You know, the way they used to act. It was just like dysfunctional, man. <laughs> I thought it was normal. Like, the more, you know, you guys curse each other out, everything, I thought it was normal. That is not a normal, healthy relationship. 
No, 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 no. Not at all. Um, man, just like talking about it, you know, the flashbacks. So anyway, the, 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 the worst of it, the worst of it, this is how we left now. I have my daughter and um, I guess we dated for about maybe three years. I had my daughter and um, one day he left me for dead in the bath. Besides the other suicidal thing that he left me in the bath to go do suicide, all of that. But, um, I could just remember the last time. I, this is when I left. I said, no more. This is not normal. Even though my parents wasn't saying anything, my family wasn't saying anything. Everybody knew I got beat up. And I just didn't want to take it anymore. I was done. I had to help myself, you know? And um, after he beat me up, broke my nose, left me for dead, it was blood everywhere. He threw me in the bathtub. It's like this guy, the patterns again, this guy like bath. Two times in the bathtub to try to commit suicide together. And then the last time he broke my nose and everything, beat me up. That was the most vicious beating. I know it was getting worse and worse every time. He left me for dead in the bath, uh, in, the, in, in the bathtub. He left me for dead. He threw me in the bathtub after he broke my nose because he's seen so much blood. People do get scared and people do get panicky. He threw me in the bathtub, turned the water on and left me for dead. Left me. So I don't know how I crawled out of the shower, called 911. My parents come, everything. And that was the last day I ever talked to him again. Ever, ever, ever. I didn't want no nothing child support. I didn't want nothing from him. So that particular child's father, let me tell you what he did. Um, he started talking to another girl right away. Narcissistic behavior. He came to my house with pampers, with the girl in the car, um, cued up self. You know what I'm saying? Throwing it in my face after he almost came. He didn't even go to jail, guys. Um, it was crazy. Back in the days, like, um, because I went to the hospital, everything, because I had to, and um, police wasn't called. I guess now they will do, like, follow-up and everything. That didn't happen. Anywho, um, the way I got him out of my face was I had to take a bada bada man. Like I said, I'm Jamaican. I took a, a more roughneck guy than him. You know, I met this guy, and this guy was, like, really really bad like a gangster I had to take him because I wanted to him leave leave this guy alone and I was like actually scared of him beating me and the beating getting worse so when I started talking to that gangster guy he left me alone and to tell you the truth that gangster guy treated me the best never abused me nothing he was one of those guys that always told me everything straight up we had the best relationship anyway he died now but that gangster guy treated me the best I ever been treated in my life. Is this thing recording? I think so. Anyway, um, what else? Yeah, he did treat me good. He died though. He was in these streets, but he didn't let nobody hurt me. He took care of me very well. Whatever, guys. I'm just telling you my story. Um, and then that's it. And then other uh, after him, after the guy that I told you took care of me, um, after him. I, I did meet my husband years after, and he did knock on the door and wanted to talk to me, but I knew if I went downstairs, at the time I was married, I knew if I went downstairs, my husband would have been out the picture. And you know what I wish now, looking back, I wish I would have went downstairs. But anyway, so after I met my husband, I'm just telling you guys about generational curses. The abuse didn't stop because after I met my husband, he was so covert, covert. I've been married to him 25 years. I thought it was the best man I ever had. But then after the relationship broke, really at the end, after he started devaluating me, um, back in 2016, um, he put his hand around my neck because we had an argument. And I wanted to know what was so important on his phone. So I snatched the phone out of his hand. He put his hand around my neck. And um, that was it. The relationship broke. I did not get him arrested, but he did come out of the house. The house that he went into is the side chick that he's talking to right now. I call her his wife because you're keeping secret with somebody else that's not your wife. She knows everything about me. I don't know nothing about this lady other than she likes to play games. So the generational curses come in like this. The children is affected because my child is affected because now that he got a new supply, um, 
He lives four blocks over. He do not come to see my son. He calls every day, yes. He do not come to see my son. What do you think that is doing to my son? He has his father and he feels rejected just like I feel rejected. But I, t I spoke to my son and I told him, you did not do anything wrong. Because guys, we got to get these kids counseling. We got to talk to them and tell them the truth. So I'm telling you this about the generational curses because I'm hoping and praying because my son uh, seen the abuse. It only happened once. He only put his hand on me once, but once was enough for me. And then I took him back. And then he cheated on me. So when they said the narcissistic cycle get worse, it does. He put his hand around my neck. I took him back like a fool. Dropped a restraining 10-year order. And he just tricked me. That's all he did. They are very, very clever. clever. Very, very clever. He comes in. He love bomb you. Everything you think you... I thought my marriage was going to get fixed. I thought we were going to, you know, work it out. It wasn't like that. He was crying the crocodile tears and everything. It was all a lie. They are a very, very good actor. But ooh, moving forward, as I reflect, I'm glad I'm going to be the generational curse breaker. But what I'm telling you is that even like with my son, his son, I'm hoping when he gets into a relationship, he doesn't follow the pattern. But I'm talking to him, talking to him. And I don't know until he gets into a relationship. I'm talking to him and, you know, and hoping that he won't do that trying to show him a good uh, example this is why when I came out of the relationship I did not go into another relationship because I need to heal I don't want someone else coming to do the same thing because again guys it's a cycle so with my my next son he got into an abusive relationship but he wasn't the abuser the girl was the abuser the two girls that he spoke to were abusers you know so it was very abusive a lot of people think that females can't be abusers but yes they can and they even do worse Girl used to spit in his face. Girl shot the next one shot after him. All kind of stuff. Yeah, so we got to be careful, okay? When you grew up in a narcissistic uh, household, uh, it's kind of likely that you will um, meet narcissistic people and they will abuse you, okay? The thing is, you got to stop giving second chances. When somebody shows you who they are and treats you uh, so horribly, believe them. Just believe them. Don't wait until they get worse, 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 worse. And what's funny about those generational curses, guys, is that you're going through your trauma, right? And then your kids, kids, kids are going through drama. Um, you're seeing the pattern. S some of your kids are going through the drama. You can see um, the pattern in their relationship because you've been there, done that. Even though they don't say nothing to you, you see it. You talk to them, but they have to go through the fire as well. So as they're going through their fire and they come back, sometimes they try to leave the relationship and keep going back. You already know it's the narcissistic cycle and they got to go through it. This is what I'm saying. That's a generational curses, guys. Some people will tell their stories. Some people will hide it. My life is an open book. Okay. Um, and so then not only is your kids going through it, but your grandkids are going through it as well. I would like to take this time now to talk about um, health issues that could happen from dealing with a narcissist. You might get heart attack, diabetes, uh, nerve problem, definitely PTSD, CPTSD, um, anxiety. Oh my God, listen, it gets really serious. Heart attack, strokes, uh, venereal disease. Um, you might end up in a psychiatric ward because you have a mental, mental issues, nervous breakdown. It happened to me. Um, and then, so then looking back now, like even my mother, she would tell me to stay with my abuser just because, oh, we look so good together. We look so good together, but in the background, behind the scene is very abusive relationship. It's not good because the older generation, they believe in marriage. I believe in marriage too, but I believe in a healthy marriage. So if it's okay, if it's time for you to move on from that narcissistic, uh, relationship you must move on heal yourself learn as much as you can learn um first you're going to be obsessed with the videos yes it's okay i want to shout out denzel moss right now he's the one that helped me find out about this narcissistic uh relationship what you want to do after you come out of a narcissistic relationship is make sure you declutter get rid of everything that has to do with that uh narcissist because it also spiritual attack attachment and this is a warfare, guys. This is not from the natural. It's from the spiritual. It's from the spiritual. It's like good and evil fighting. So 
you got a war prayer, guys. You got a war prayer. I'm going to show you how to war prayer in a little while. I'm going to end it with a war prayer. Um, you got to pray for your generation to break every chain, every curse off of your family. Okay? Maybe nobody else in your family did it. Like when I grew up, I didn't know nothing about praying. I heard about uh, the Lord is my shepherd prayer. Uh, I used to hear my mother say, praise God, praise God when she comes in the door. But it wasn't no Bible reading. Um, it should be like every day. It wasn't that. It wasn't no praying every day or nothing like that. Like I said again, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not here to tear my mother down or my parents down. I'm just here for teaching and learning. She did the best that she could with the tools that she had. Okay, I love them from afar. I have to for my own mental health. Uh, I learn with this narcissistic uh, um, thing that I'm going through right now to learn to detach from people, places, and things, okay? Only thing I want to be connected, only source I want to be connected to right now is Lord Jesus himself, because he's the one that, that get me through this. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, you got to break the generational curse. It starts with each one of us, okay? You cannot uh, keep on sitting in the cycle of abuse and watching them and keep on creating the same atmosphere over and over again and saying, oh, this is normal. This is just family. This is just stuff that people go through. No, it's not. It's dysfunctional. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, if you need to get counseling, if you need to get help, it's okay. You know, and then uh, and then too, when you guys uh, are going through this and you feel strong enough, you need to tell your story because my story is different from your story. You might connect with somebody else that is not listening to my videos, you know, so <laughs> just let God work on you and continue to trust God. I am going to say a war prayer right now before uh, before I leave. If you guys don't know how to war prayer, if you guys don't know how to pray, just open your mouth and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Okay, thank you for for getting me out of this disaster of a relationship because you got to thank him. But when you sit back and you look into your relationship, you're going to see that it was a blessing. Then you'll move forward and you will grow. I'm going through it right now. It's amazing. So moving forward into 2022, guys, I wish you guys luck. Not Well, I don't wish you luck. I wish you guys prosperity in 2022. I want to tell you, if you have suicidal thoughts, do not do it. That's what the narcissist, that's their main goal. Because the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. John 10, 10. Okay, but God came to give you abundant life. Okay? Do not do that. They will be so happy if you do that. That will be another soul that they won for the devil. Okay? So I just want to say a war prayer right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray right now that every victim of narcissistic abuse, every warrior, every survivor, in the name of Jesus, that you will hold their hand, oh, Father God, and that you will release them from the pits of hell. You will walk them through the valley of the shadow of death, oh, Father God. You will rest to sure, oh, Father God, that they will be strong. They will be victorious in the name of Jesus. They will take comfort, comfort in knowing that you are there right beside them right beside them oh god you will break the chains little by little they will hear the chains falling off of their life the generations to come they will not have to go through this anymore because you are strong and god is going to deliver you so you will be strong as a rock in the name of jesus rest and assure that he's there for you rest and assure that he'll walk you through the valley of the shadow of death you will fear no evil because he's with you he's with you to bring you through the rock through the rocky mountains of your life he will put you on the mountaintop if you just have the mustard seed of faith to believe into him and to trust into him just know that just like jesus christ came here to suffer that if you believe in him you got to suffer on him that's uh philippians 129 guys in the name of Jesus, he's not going to give you more than you could bear. This is just a blessing, and you got to take the lesson. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you break off every demonic chains off of these generations to come. In the name of Jesus, starting with me, strengthen me, oh Father God, that I can walk through the valley, oh Father God, and rest assured that I'm doing it for good of my family oh father god and i would detach from that narcissist i would detach from any soul tie any trauma bond 
any narcissistic order on my life, any witchcraft, any warlock in the name of Jesus, any word spell, oh Father God, any crystals in the name of Jesus, any word spells that is placed over my life and my family life, I ask you to break it in the name of Jesus. Watch over me and my family in the name of Jesus. Oh Father God, I ask you right now, right now, right now, oh God, to come and cover me, cover my family, cover my kids, kids, kids kids, 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 in the name of Jesus. Just break those chains. I'm confident that you will break those chains in the name of Jesus. And we arrest every demonic spells, oh God. We arrest them and divorce them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we know that you are the covering, oh, Father God. And we're going to put our trust in, even when we can't see where we're going, oh God. We will trust that everything you do, oh God, Everything you do in the name of Jesus is for the good of our spirit. It's the good of our salvation. And it's just going to bring us closer and closer to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. Even the pits, oh God. Even in our little valley, we, we're going to magnify your name. Your word will continue to be in my mouth in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, to cover every victim, oh, Father God, every survivor, so they could keep on warring, oh, God. They will war, oh, Father God, for the good of their family, oh, Father God. They will pray, oh, God, for those who can't pray for themselves, oh, God. And I ask you, oh, God, to just heal us, oh, God. Heal our spirit. Heal our broken soul in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, God. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, guys, put God first and everything will work out in your life. Comment, like, and share. This is part two.